Good morning and welcome to day four of our Disney cruise. And we are moving out. What? Back home. We are back moving home. out. Back home. Yeah. Well, that's where we're Alright, we're like snuggled up on the couch so yes. we can get this shot. <laughs> um, we don't have our tripod with us. So um yeah, we're just hanging out. It's kind of our last time to be able to just kinda like take it easy and hang out in the stateroom, like in the morning, just mm -hmm. have our coffee. So we did have some uh, room service brought in. We did the thing where we filled out the little form and little hung it on. Tag. Yeah. yeah, and you hang it on your door, and they bring you the stuff. It was funny though because they were about an hour earlier than we were expecting. A bit too early. <laughs> <laughs> we were the whole place was completely dark. I had to like scrounge around trying to find some <laughs> shorts to put on to answer the door. But it was great. We got a couple croissants. We got some, a bagel. We got some coffee. It was awesome. Yeah. But now we are probably going to start getting ready um, in a bit because we are going to be going to have brunch at Palo. Yeah. We've had we've heard really great things. I'm very excited about that. And we're probably going to take Little Man to the kids club a little earlier this morning because I guess if they do or. At 9.15, they're going to do something called Stitches Goo. Yeah, so today's our day at sea, so we're going to be mm -hmm. maximizing on the stuff at the ship. So uh, that's not like fun for Caleb. So yeah. we'll, we'll definitely um, start off with that. There's a couple different activities throughout the day for him. Okay, so we dropped off Little Man. He went a little early because he didn't want to miss the Stitches Goo thing. Um, and it looked like we got there just in time, which is great. Um, but yeah, our reservation isn't for another like 30 minutes. And it's so funny. I was just thinking, you know how like when we're in the parks, we're always running late. Even when we're at home, actually, we are always running late for our dining reservations. And on this trip, that has been the complete opposite. We have been early to everything, which has been kind of nice. We haven't had to rush or anything. But yeah, so we are just hanging out. Maybe we'll go find something to do for the next 30 minutes while we wait. I don't know. I was just telling, oh, you're a little backlit, but I was just telling everybody how it seems like we're, well, we are always late for every reservation, but on this ship, we've yes. been early to everything. <laughs> yeah. Like everything, we've been early. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> In general, yeah, we definitely have been. So, um, it's, it's easy because you just have to go upstairs. Or right, downstairs. exactly. So it's very much like if we were to go to Bowling Bear or whatever. Um, Caleb is not on time for his activities, but That's true, yeah. but we all but we're putting it on him, right? Like, dude, it's up to you if you want to do this thing or not, right? So, do you talk about what he's doing right now? Yeah, he's okay. doing the stitch goo. We we got there like just in time. Yeah. So so it should be fun. So we have because we're so early, um, we have to waste not waste. We need to spend thirty minutes of time here on the boat. So we have sat down brunch at Palo. We've heard so many great things. So we do have, first of all, we got our same table. <laughs> so we were sitting where we were. We just flipped seats. Yeah. Um, but we have our same server, Sylvester, who was awesome the other night. So it's nice to see him again. <clears throat> and we started with two glasses of Prosecco. So he, so he told us that the menu, it is $50 per person and you can choose absolutely anything you want. You can order as much as you want. And they do start you with one cocktail that is included. And it, they also have non-alcoholic options should you like that. So we will do a quick cheers. We got some Prosecco here. Mm, very nice. Mm. So just to clarify, they give a complimentary beverage, not a cocktail. So okay, it yeah. is limited to mimosa or prosecco. Um, so those are the options. They do also have a non-alcoholic. Um, I imagine that's probably like a, a Bellini said, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. So they do have those options for you. Now after this, they do have some cocktails. They have some Bloody Marys and stuff like that. That's obviously a charge. So you do have that variety to continue on if you choose to do so with your brunch. So before we order, we're going to start digging into this bread. It looks really great. Steve gravitated right for the blue cheese focaccia. There that is. Everything looks so good. And yes, you will notice I sound a little stuffed up. So <laughs> the cold winds have wreaked havoc on my system and I'm a little stuffed up. <laughs> Never fails, this right? This happens every vacation. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to do a little pan down of the menu so you can see each and every item on there. Um, for antipasta, Steve and I decided to <laughs> divide and conquer. So Steve is going to do this top one, which is more seafood focused. And I'm doing the next one, which is more like um, sliced meats and cheeses. I think there's cheeses on there. And then as you can see, there's some egg dishes, waffles and pancakes, which is right where my eye gravitates immediately. They've got some stone oven pizzas, some soups, and then the entrees look fantastic too. Sylvester really recommended the lasagna bolognese, and like they even have a 
grilled cut sirloin steak. I mean, it's just kind of like they have a little bit of something for everyone here, which is very, very nice. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. Oh, yummy. We'll start with the seafood. Starting is the Johannes claws. They're very juicy. And they are all opened out for you to enjoy. Oh, so, yeah. Great. As you can see, our antipasta has shown up, and mine looks fantastic. What do you think? Mine does too as well. I'm happy that it's not like overwhelming. It's yeah. like a nice small sampling. I'm a little bit concerned when you look at this menu as to how um, right. robust it is that I do want to try a little bit of everything. So as opposed to a traditional buffet line, it is seated. They bring everything out to you. Right. So I think that makes it a little bit fresher mm -hmm. and a little bit more of a, a cultivated experience, right? So I'm For definitely sure. like that. Yeah, mine looks fantastic. He did go over and explain each and every piece, which is wonderful. Um, but he did say to end with this cheese. So this is a truffle infused cheese and it's got quite a strong flavor that if I start with that, it might overpower everything else. So we're saving that one for last. To the bread service, because we forgot to mention this. I started with this roll here. Steve is currently enjoying that right now. And it was like a sun-dried tomato kind of a thing going on. It was okay. Steve went for this one first, and so I was intrigued because it's a blue cheese and onion roll. It is fantastic. And the bread on this is so soft. Highly, high. this one was the best one so far. Okay, so we have been enjoying this for a bit and the reviews are in. This was very, very good. I liked almost everything on it. This one was a little funky for me, so I'm not crazy about that. But the prosciutto, I forget what this was, and the salami are fantastic, very fresh, very flavorful. Uh, the Parmigiano Reggiano is fantastic. It's one of my favorite cheeses. I have to admit though, I still haven't tried out this truffle one. I'm saving it for the end, like I mentioned. And Steve has finished up his seafood platter. Everything was great. Uh, I was just telling Mike, the only thing that um, I prefer muscles in its broth, because you get a little bit more flavor than that. Right. Outside of that, everything is really good. I'm typically not a huge fan. I don't lean towards salmon, um, like lox or anything like that. This, however, the flavor was very good. It's super fresh. Everything was delicious. So I'm very happy with that. So we have been enjoying our dishes and the reviews are in. My like charcuterie board is very, very delicious. But of course, I am saving my truffle cheese for the very end. Although I, I might just take a peek right now because I'm very intrigued by how this goes. It looks oily. Like it's definitely truffly. Okay. <laughs> Should I try it? I'll just try it. Let's right just now. do it out. All right, here we go. Mm. Good thing out the truffle oil. It's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it in your face? Now I will say this though. This one doesn't have as much of like the marbling as this one. Mm -hmm. This one has got quite a bit. Okay. So let's try this. It's very good. I definitely understand what he said though. Like it's overpowering. We're not overpowering. I, I don't want to like give it a negative connotation. He said it was going to overshine the Parmesan ratio. Yeah, for sure, definitely. A lot of truffle there. Very good. So I'll have to admit, like here at Palo, I do appreciate, especially Sylvester, because he's giving us a lot of information about the region, where yeah. things are coming from. So it's not just here's some salami, here's some prosciutto. He's telling us exactly the backstory of this, and you know. During you know COVID, I did one of those twenty three and Me things to figure out my background. And it turns out that I, I'm predominantly um, I'm predominantly British, German, and Italian. So who knew? Probably because I have my light color eyes and dark hair. But with that, I was like totally obsessed with Stanley Tucci's Searching for Italy, and it's exactly what Sylvester's talking about. Like all like the mm -hmm. authentic stuff. It's a great show, but um, you know, really, it just makes you appreciate what they put on here, right? And it's things that are only found in Italy that we take for granted, like prosciutto. If it's like legitimate prosciutto, it's only produced in Italy. It's kind of like champagne is only produced in the Champagne region. So those are the things that we can totally appreciate with a place like Palo that's bringing this regional flair to us. Scrambled eggs on the side. Am I right? Thank you. Yep. And I didn't want you to mess with the pancakes. I brought the bread to the yeah. Thank you very much. That. Give me a minute. Make your own pancakes. You have your own setup to put it away. Wonderful. Okay, so I was going to say that our entrees are here, but Steve was Steve was telling me this is not the last thing we can get. Like, I mean, the expectation is that this is step two. Okay. So the first thing is like. Um, uh, well, what, it's not like a, 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 a mousse-bouche, but you know, it's right. like kind of just like a welcome. This is our appetizer. 
And then we're going to move into Andre's. Next. Oh, man. Because I, I went kind of big. I ordered the blueberry pancakes, <laughs> and I requested, it wasn't on the menu, but I asked if I could do a side of scrambled eggs. And of course, they're just like, absolutely, we could do that, no problem. But um, he set these down. Oh, my gosh, they smell so good. And then your frittata looks awesome as right. well. So this is just a ham and cheese frittata. So um, traditional Italian style, which is not ours, right? I expect it to be like a little, like almost like a tart. Yeah. But this is prepared very classically Italian with arugula on top and balsamic. So I love balsamic. It's going to add a little bit of a different flavor to this. So I'm excited. And as I mentioned, I got the blueberry pancakes. So you can see they sprinkled it with some powdered sugar. And then we've got a little bit of cream in there. And then, of course, it's served with some syrup. So I can dress it up just how I like it. Oh my. Okay, I have dug in, as you can see. These have such a good flavor. It's just that perfect pancake bite. And then you've got those melted blueberries on top and with a little bite with the whipped cream and syrup. Oh my goodness, this is delicious. And I have to admit, these scrambled eggs are so good. Again, they were not on the menu, but I ordered them because I was thinking, as much as I love the, the sweeter side of breakfast, I always like to have a little bit of breakfast protein. So I did the eggs not realizing that this was just kind of like a part two of i still have another choice to make i guess well either choice or we could split something because okay, that's there, a good idea. there are pretty heavy items coming forward right. so we could split two items or one item we can figure it out i think it's everything's available to us on this menu we can figure that out yeah <laughs> but as it stands right now i'm very very happy and how's your frittata so I'll have to admit, um, the balsamic provides so much like depth to the flavor. Like it takes like a normal like omelet or like you know flavored egg, and just like I don't know, just like it, you get so much more to it. It's really good. I'm gonna have you try it just so you uh, explain what I'm talking about here. If my second number one in front of <laughs> you, those are the wine raviolis, so yeah, made here, stuffed with mushroom puree with ricotta cheese, so yeah, sprinkle and give you that lovely more cheesy flavor. So our entrees have arrived and I went with the lasagna. Well, I say I went, but we're gonna share this. So here it is. This is the lasagna bolognese. This came highly recommended by our server and it's served with a Roma tomato sauce. And he says it takes them three days to make this. And then we also went with the wild mushroom ravioli. And this is Meyer lemon, nut brown butter and toasted pine nuts. I dug in and I, I, I kind of mangled it getting that first bite, but holy moly, that is a very, very good lasagna. That pasta is cooked perfectly. That meat has so much flavor and the tomato sauce is just, oh man, it's hitting all the right spots. This is fantastic. And I started with the mushroom and you could see that it's nicely breaded and a good amount of stuffing in there as well but the sauce is definitely the star here again it's a Meyer lemon nut butter sauce topped with pine nuts as well it's elegant tastes so good um, the, the flavors are all there it's definitely an exceptional ravioli okay I was the first one to try both I just took a bite of um, I mean we're sharing it I call this Steve's ravioli but it's very good, it's nice. Um, the pasta is a little, it's it's very thick in my opinion. I liked it, but I think the lasagna, I, I'm very excited, I'm very eager to see what you're gonna say about this lasagna. Okay. Get a good bite because right. in my opinion, this is where it's at. Here go. You know us, we always have to have a competition. Who ordered the better dish? <laughs> oh my gosh. So technically, I won. Oh yeah? Because I ordered both of these. That is true, <laughs> yes. This is really good. <laughs> so he said that this is 70-30 um, beef and pancetta. So 30% pancetta, the rest of it's beef. So totally different flavors here. It is 
pretty delicious. Heavy, but delicious. Yeah, a little goes a long way. I, I am glad when he set it down, I was glad that it wasn't as big as I thought it was going to be. Because yeah. I think whenever I see lasagna on the menu, I'm like, oh my goodness, that's going to it's gonna kill my stomach. But this was a nice portion. Okay, and if we weren't stuffed already, there is also a dessert menu. So dessert is on the menu next. I'm going to do a quick pan of the menu so you can kind of see what we've got. They've got a warm, oh, are we focusing? Let's see. We've got a warm amaretto chocolate fondant. He says it's basically like a lava cake. The Italian, this is like their signature, it sounds like. The lemoncello tart, which is going to be light and refreshing after such a heavy meal. The buttermilk panna cotta and a chocolate raspberry tart. And then from the bakery, we've got some apple, warm apple cinnamon sticky buns. Um, Steve said he is going to go with the limoncello tort. I think I'm going to go for this one because he really talked this one up. So I'm actually just kind of eager to see what it looks like. All right, here it is, folks. This is the Italian. I keep, I'm, I'm going to say it wrong. Oh, I, I learned, I don't have the menu. Sylvester really sold me on this. I, I bet, I guess there's fresh berries underneath. It's going to be one of those desserts where I, we're going to have to figure out what it is as we dig in. And then Steve went with the limoncello tart. Now he did say it looks pretty intense, but because it's not made with regular flour, instead it's made with almond flour, it's actually very, very light. I'm excited about this. It does remind me of like a grapefruit cake that we typically see. So yeah. citrus board, it's supposed to be pretty light. I'm excited. Mm. You're gonna like this. Okay. The almond flavors are there. The lemon is obviously there from the limoncello. Very well balanced, and yeah, it's not heavy at all. So this is a nice, like, refreshing way to like wrap up like an intermezzo or whatever. Like, nice to wrap up the entire meal. Mm, very good. Oh, and mine is delicious too. So he did say this is essentially a Benedict sauce. It's very like kind of creamy custard, and you can see they've kind of toasted it on top. It almost has like a creme brulee flavor quality to it and then underneath buried we've got some strawberries I saw some blueberries under there of course you could probably use these little crisps to um, create a little bite with that this is very very delicious I just took a bite of Steve's limoncello tart it is very very good I have to admit it's very light and fluffy too I like that a lot yeah. I do have to say though the flavor of mine is so good. Steve mentioned it's like a burnt custard and it is so delicious. But I will say this, I feel like it gets sweeter with every bite. So now it's starting to get a little too heavy, too rich for me. Oh yeah. yeah. But the flavor is very good. I kind of, I did a couple bites of yours and I stuck with mine. Yeah. So. <laughs> so we are settling up here and Sylvester, we have to give him a huge shout out. He has yeah. been amazing. Again, we did have him, he was our server the other night here at Palo and now we've had him here for brunch. And look what he sent us with to give to Caleb. <laughs> so he said it's a little bribe to get him out of the kids club. Yeah, it'll work. <laughs> and thus we wrap up our brunch at Palo. All right, so we picked up little man and right there's here, right here. Donald right over there. Oh, there he goes. Pretty cool. Hey dad, why <clears throat> don't put that stuff around there? Put uh, that there. Different stuff. So you made some slime? Goo. Oh, goo. Oh, okay. All right. So today, which is nice, the shops are open like all day. Every day we've been here, the shops don't open until late in the evening, which is a little disappointing. But we figure not only is this our last day to do this, they're open. Yeah. So let's do some shopping. So we've got white caps and then across the way, Mickey's main sale. Oh, maybe I should get a hat. Although, I'm always hesitant to buy a white hat. Steve got one from the concierge, but these are kind of cute too. I feel like I've got so many hats though. I have to admit, I haven't seen too much like kid clothing while we've been here. So this looks like it's a pajama set because it's got some, I'm trying to lift this up here. It's got some legging style pants in there. So this is $27. But like, if you look behind me, it's all like, adult sized clothing this is like that piece back there was like the one piece i saw that was kid sized oh steve just pointed out except for maybe this shirt we got this shirt here as well but like the other day i was looking for like flip-flops or a sweater for caleb and i couldn't find it okay this one is 21.99 and what did you say caleb uh, this i want to wear this because it would look pretty good on christmas it would look pretty good on you huh can we just buy it yeah we could probably get this hey how 
Do we have that much money for this? Yes, we do. We can get this. Oh, okay. And now here's another little kid's shirt. This one's really cute, too. This is a button-up collar. Oh, it's really thin. This would be nice for maybe like a hotter cruise. And this one is $39.99. Okay, across the way, now we're at Mickey's main sale. This is super cute. Caleb's already got a swim shirt, which he's been wearing on our swim days, but that's really cute. Oh, yeah, there's some adult flip-flops. Okay, so they do have some kids' Crocs here, so that would have been helpful. But, like I said, when we needed them on swim day, like, this store wasn't going to be open until, like, 8 o'clock at night. Okay, now I'm finding, like, tons of stuff. You know what? I have to say, in my defense, the last time we were here, the show was about to start, so this place was so oh busy, so it was hard to see everything. It was like Emporium when the park closes and everybody's just rushing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It was that busy. So this is much better. I, I wish they had this store open... All the time. ...throughout the day, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, as it is our last full day here, we decided, even though it's kind of chilly and quite windy, Caleb really wanted to go swimming again, so let's do it. And as can be expected, after a couple hours of swimming, uh, Little Man was starving. And so Steve ran to Cabana's real quick and got a plate for him. And Little Man, he just loved that he could just have a little bit of everything. Try a chicken nugget, try a little bite of hamburger, maybe a dinner roll. He was a big fan of this. And of course, you know, he had to have a good lunch in order to have his dessert. Is it good? Yeah, six. Okay, you just gotta have a bite of that. Six. Okay, so we are back in our room now, just kind of hanging out. We took Caleb, we took Little Man out to go swim. He wanted to go swim one more time, even though it's kind of chilly out and it's very windy. We figured this is our last day and he's been really looking forward to doing it. So we did it. So he was happy and that's all that matters on this trip. And so now we are back in the room. Caleb is using our, the hot tub, like with the jets in it. So he's in heaven. He's getting cleaned up because he's going to go to the kids club. And Steve and I are going to go to Senses, the spa. We are going to go have massages. Uh, what, a, what a great way to end the Disney cruise, right? But yeah, I am very excited to just spend these last few hours on our cruise just like relaxing, living that spa life. So I am not gonna be taking this big vlogging camera obviously into Census Spa with us. Um, if it's not busy and stuff, I will bust out my cell phone and try to get some footage for you guys. But ultimately I don't think there's gonna be too much to show there. And we're just getting massages. We're not doing like the rainforest room or anything like that. But I will capture what I can for you. Before we head out real quick, I wanted to capture this moment because this may be the last time I see it with this. I, so our, our massages are at 315. Probably not going to get out of there until about 430 at least. So it'll be closer to sunset. So, But I can't help but just look out here and just see how blue this water is. It's so gorgeous. I am definitely going to miss this view for sure. Okay, so here we are, Senses Spa and Salon. Now, don't let this shot fool you. Uh, because this was day at sea, a lot of people were at Senses. It was pretty busy when we were there. Um, so I, I wasn't comfortable putting out, you know, bringing out my phone or grabbing footage in this kind of an environment when other people are there, just trying to relax and enjoy their time. I did, as you can see here, I did get a quick shot of the actual massage room where I received my 50 minute massage. It was very nice and serene, quiet. Um, they had the like the spa music going very tranquil. And then here is a quick look at some of the products that were used throughout my massage. And then of course, for other services that they provide there. Okay, we are back. Excuse my voice. I always get this like weird voice after a massage. Like I'm just so relaxed. And it's like that nasal fry or the vocal fry, whatever they call it. But that was fantastic. Now it was a little busy. Today is our day at sea. So I think a lot of people were doing the massages and taking 
you know, doing everything they have there at Census. So I didn't get like any footage there. Um, there was always people in the locker room, but it was really nice. There was, so we just had an appointment for a, a 50 minute massage, but we were able to go in. There was a men's locker room, a changing station. You get a robe. We didn't get any slippers, but there was a place for you to lounge and you can wait to be called. There was, um, I think there were like two showers that you could use. There was a place to shave with lots of like lotions and shampoos and conditioners. And there was also a sauna that was available to you. Um, I believe they have like in the rainforest room, that is an additional charge you, and you have to pay like per day. I think in there they've got like different types of showers and tubs and steam rooms. But even if you're just getting a massage like we did, you still have access to a sauna, which was really nice. But yeah, I thought my massage was fantastic. I had a great time. I'm very relaxed. What a nice way to end our cruise. What did you think? I'm very relaxed. <laughs> so yeah, I have the same <clears throat> vocal fry as you. And like, it's just it's just really nice that we would end the cruise with a massage. Like, right. we're, we're like totally relaxed right now. Yes. Now having said this, we're gonna go to dinner in about an hour and we're gonna be like, <gasps> It's a little chaotic in the dining rooms, yes. <laughs> but yeah, no, we uh, had great service. Um, got some stuff to take home as well just to help you know keep on with the whole we both got talked into buying all the uh, some of the stuff all the products not all of it but some <laughs> of the stuff but it, it's gonna be good like it's like for muscle relaxation or mu muscle relaxants and stuff like that for like salts epsom salt stuff like that so yeah nothing too crazy uh, but yeah, I think next time, and our friends Josh and Taylor rave about this, the, the rainforest thing, mm -hmm. we should definitely look at that the next time. Right. I'll show you guys what we got in a second, but the other thing, um, and I'm curious to know if you thought this, um, one of the things I definitely noticed was that the ship was rocking mm -hmm. when I was laying there, and I was like, this actually kind of like adds to the experience. I thought it was great. Yeah, it definitely makes it a little bit more relaxing, honestly. Yeah, like, it definitely, I liked it. Yeah, it, it almost reminded me of like how it, it, like it, it's an experiential massage like uh -huh. in Hawaii like we've done like the Obi I was just gonna say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's definitely that I you know at one point in time I was like I was gonna ask him like has it ever been so intense that you've had to suspend your service oh, like yeah. but I hate when I, I despise talking during a massage so I opted <laughs> not to say that but it was fantastic. So let me show you what we got. So judging by our bags it looks like Steve and I got the same thing but I got like a brush there you go, I just popped it out. But as you can see, it's got a wood handle and it's a brush. So she used this on me to start the massage and it was really, really nice. And then I got a Aching Muscle Super Soak. This is Instant Refreshing Gel. This is what she used on me at the very end of the massage. And then this here was the Cellutox Active Body Oil. And she used this, um, she used this on me throughout the massage. The other thing was I also got like a bath, something or another, but she forgot to put it in my bag. So she's having it sent to our room. Um, but yeah, so this is what I got. And of course we had our massages in different rooms. So very tricky. I'm sure we got some duplicates here to see what we Probably. actually got sold. So um, we have our own separate brush, which we already talked Wonderful. about. Wonderful. <laughs> This here is called the Aching okay, Muscle yes. Super Soak. Yeah, so I got that too, but she forgot it, so she's going to bring it to me later. Okay. This here is the Instant Refreshing Gel, which yep, is also that. what you got as well. <laughs> this is the Muscle Ease Active Body Oil. Okay. Oh, is that one different than mine then? I don't know. Oh, yeah, because I got the Cellutox Active Body Oil. Okay, mm -hmm. well. Okay. A little bit different. And then this is a bath soak. So this is... The Muscleese Herbal Bath Synergy. Oh, maybe this is the one that she was telling me to go. Okay, what was the first one I got? Okay, so we did, okay, so this is the one I'm missing. So we got two of these, the Aching Muscle Super Soak. So she's gonna deliver my Muscle, muscle Ease Herbal Bath. This is so interesting for everyone at home, I'm sure. I know, so we got had, <laughs> <laughs> they got us. <laughs> well, it was funny, cause then she was like, oh yeah, I think Steve, so this is the other thing that was like, crazy about this cruise. Everybody knows who you are. They know your life story. Yeah. They know your name. She was asking about Caleb and I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I just met you. Yeah. <laughs> but she was like putting my stuff together. She's like, I believe Steve had this. And when you get out of the bath, make sure he puts this on your back. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but ultimately, regardless, I had a fantastic time. Steve really loved it. So I would definitely do it again. If we're ever gonna do another cruise, we'll definitely get a massage, go back to senses. Yeah, this was great.
So now I think we are just going to quickly freshen up a little bit. Um, like Steve said, yeah, we have dinner in one hour, so we gotta go pick up Little Man, and it's our last night on the cruise. They delivered our luggage tags, so we've got these, and I guess we have to have our luggage outside of our room by like 10, 15 tonight, because we disembark like literally first thing tomorrow. All right, so Steve is picking up Caleb from the Oceaneers Club. Just a quick little look at the lobby here. And after this, we're gonna go have dinner at Tiana's Palace. Or I'm sorry, Tiana's Place. I keep wanting to call it Tiana's Palace. It's Tiana's Place. Now, admittedly, some of you are gonna like, <laughs> some of you are, some of you guys are gonna give us a hard time for this. But as I mentioned, here we are on our final night. We have not done any of the shows here. Unfortunately, they've just never lined up. And I know there is like a live Frozen musical that everyone has been talking about, everyone's been raving about. We're so bummed out we missed it, but it was just like, it's playing. The first show is playing right during our dinner. And then the second time is just way too late for Little Man. So Little Man, Caleb's bedtime is 7.30, but, and we've been pushing him a little bit on this cruise. But man, you guys, I'm not kidding you. At 8, 8.30, he is crashed. He is dead to the world. So we have decided we're gonna let him decide if he wants to go see the show tonight, we'll stay up, but I don't think he's gonna make it, but we're gonna put it on him, because um, this is our last chance to see the show. It's not the Frozen show, it's something called like Disney Dreams or something, but it's supposed to have like Peter Pan and classic Disney characters. Everyone's talking about it tonight, so we're gonna leave it up to him if he wants to see the show or not, but I have, I have a sneaking suspicion he's gonna fall asleep before showtime, but we'll see. Oh, okay, I have to admit, this place is very themed. Tiana's Place, here we are. Feels like Mardi Gras. Wow, I got lots of beads. So tonight we are dining at Tiana's Place. Man, ever since I saw Princess and the Frog, I have wanted to dine here. Okay, I'm gonna try and give you a quick look at the menu. As you can see, we've got some appetizers here. That Louisiana hot crab dip sounds really great. We've got some soups and salads. Um, I've kind of been wanting a Caesar salad. Uh, bread service tonight is fig and date ciabatta roll. And then I have to admit, the entrees look pretty good. I may ask my server what she recommends. Um, but some great options here. We even have some vegetarian entrees. And then I always, I've noticed a lot of the menus have this, the lighter note offerings. So if that's something you're interested in, they've got you covered. Apparently we are have, we, this is going to be one of the best dinners of the cruise and we're gonna have some live jazz. And apparently there's gonna be something that comes along here. So our server, Miss Spicy has told us we have the best seat in the house. Best seat in the house because she said, I got your best seat in the house so you can do the... The camera. The thing. <laughs> so very nice of them to do that. Um, again, we arrived probably like four minutes late yeah. after the seating time and it's already rocking here. Oh so, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're off to a uh, kicking start, roaring start. In case you were interested, here's a quick look at the kids' menu here at Tiana's. One thing I really like about, um, I, I'm guessing this is the way for all Disney cruises, but if there was something Caleb did not want on this menu, he could absolutely order something from the, like, the regular adults menu, and they would be fine. And honestly, I, I, I feel like you could pretty much just order anything that they could possibly whip up in the kitchen, and they'll make it happen for you. Our appetizer has shown up. This is the Louisiana hot crab dip with toasted croutons. Looks pretty good. And Steve and I, we got the same thing. So, only one right now. Open the beans, please. Yeah. <laughs> now, all you kids, I see that you all have some comfortable protectors on the front of the table. Can you wake up for me so I can see? I'll see them. I have dug in. I think this is really good. It is very good. It is called the hot crab dip. There yeah. are probably 500 people here. That's not hot. <laughs> but yeah, one more time it was. But it is very tasty. Well, there goes Lewis. 
How's the salad, bud? Pretty good. Pretty good? <laughs> and because it is our last night on the cruise, we decided he could have a little bit of dessert before dinner. So little man got a strawberry smoothie. Perfect compliment to a Caesar salad, right? Gotta know how it is. All right. Oh, awesome. Seal of approval. I'm gonna leave it all for you. Everybody know what you thought of the crab dip. What'd you think about that? What'd you think of that crab dip? Okay, yep, this is a first on this channel. Little man was not a fan of That's the crab okay. dip. It's okay. He's yeah. gotta try new things. It happens. Oh, you're sick. Admittedly, we are going a little bigger tonight, so we also decided to start with a little bit of a salad. So this is a Caesar salad, and what makes this a little bit more, like, a little different is that it's got some broccoli rabe in there. I thought that was interesting, and I love a good Caesar salad, so let's see what we got here. Quick correction, I think I said broccoli rabe. I meant broccolini. So this is my second Caesar salad that I've gotten on this trip. Is it your second Caesar salad? Uh, no, I think it's my first. Okay. So, I think they mixed up the dressings because this oh, really? is honey mustard. It's oh, definitely is it? not a Caesar flavor. Okay. And the first one I had on, on the first day also had that same flavor as well. It's not that Caesar flavor, it's, it's honey mustard. So, I think you might be right. Yeah, now yeah. that I'm like tasting it, like, okay. Yeah, it's honey mustard, like honey Dijon, like flavor to it. <laughs> so, maybe, like, I know that Dijon is in Caesar. Maybe they just go really heavy on this. Yeah, but no. it's not the traditional Caesar profile. Okay. Interesting. Regardless, how is this salad? It's a great honey mustard salad. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think you're right. <laughs> the more I eat it, like, I don't know, I was just blindly eating it. I thought it would taste great, but now that you said that, yeah, it's like honey mustard. It's very strong. Like, it is. It's yeah. good though. Yeah. It's just not Caesar. Yeah. What's that? And dinner has arrived, and now here's the deal. I was very on the fence with this menu, so I decided to go with our server's recommendation, and this is the Tom Turkey Breast. It's basically like a little Thanksgiving dinner, and I was like, you know what, I'll go for it, because here's the deal. On this cruise line, we have discovered, if you don't like it, you can send it back. You know I don't want to do that, but I can get something different, but I figured I would try it out. Thank you very much. All right, and for mine, I got the trio of veal. This is grilled veal loin, pulled shank, and tortillaccio pasta with a sun-dried tomato, sage reduction, garnish, and a potato crisp. I'll have to admit, it says it's a trio of veal. I've only heard two descriptions in that description of veal, so I wonder where the third's at. Maybe it's in the pasta. Right now it is time for the Bayou Parade. But little man has said that he is tired. <laughs> that um, celebration, I guess. I don't know what to call it, but a Mardi Gras celebration. Uh, I have yet to review my food, and I'll have to admit, um, it wasn't great. So just stare away from the trio of veal. Veal, in my opinion, is supposed to be super tender. And I know it's, uh, it's a bit of a sticky topic to order veal in general, so I apologize for anybody that's offended. Um, don't worry about it, you don't have to order it, because it was a little bit tough tonight, so you can skip that next time. And I have to say, with my Tom's turkey, it was fine. It actually wasn't nearly as dry as I was expecting it to be. 
I wound up eating all my turkey. I thought it was very flavorful. The gravy was really great. The relish definitely helps. Um, but I felt like the green beans were very blah. And um, the stuffing, that was dry. That was very, very dry. Overall, it was kind of what I expected, but it was good. Did she tell you how it fit in with the New Orleans thing? No. I don't understand how that dish fit in here, but... So normally I'm very concerned about keeping the camera steady, but like, we are rocking oh, yeah. right now. This dinner, we are rocking like yes. crazy. <laughs> so, so. If, if we're going up and down, the steady cam's on, folks. I'm sorry if you're getting motion sickness. <laughs> yeah. We're on a boat. <laughs> we are on a boat. And now we have arrived at dessert, and this is a signature dessert here at Tiana's Place. This is the Banafi Cream Pie. Caramel toffee base top with bananas and an abundance of whipped cream. All right, so guess who woke up for dessert? This is so good. That was so good. So good? So this is the apple pie. So our waitress made this origami frog inspired by Princess and the Frog tonight. So good. Pretty cool. All right, how about you try your apple pie? I'll try and try it. Yeah, you're gonna try the bread or the cookie first. Oh, you're gonna dip it. How does that taste? Of course. Real tough critic there. Back at the room, as you can see, little man got his second wind after the dessert. And this is the character we've got today. What's this one, man? A different one. A di oh, a different one. <laughs> look at his mouth. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, and look at that. Back at our room and census brought me my muscle base herbal bath synergy. So I got it. All right, and I think with that, gosh, I feel like I'm starting to lose my voice. I think with that, I'm going to end it here. Oh, okay, hold on, I wasn't quite ready for you yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Let's be nice, okay? God, it's, <laughs> not, it's nice. not your vlog. It, it, it kind of is. Is it? <laughs> All right, and we are back in our room now, and I am sorry. Stop, okay. So as you can see, we are back in a room now, and I am, I feel like I'm starting to lose my voice. It never fails. Um, oh. <laughs> okay, all is good now. Let's do this over. I'm losing my voice, like, rapidly now. Oh, real quick, I know it's, okay. <laughs> are you good? No. What? <laughs> you were just smiling a second ago. Are you good? Caleb. What happened? I, I tripped and my belly just don't hit this glass. Okay, you tripped and you fell. Are you okay yeah, now though? This glass is very hard. Yeah, well. Very hard for like calm. How many times have we told you to kind of like slow calm down. down and slow down? Okay. Right? Okay. I break three pieces. Oh, you thank want you. A few? Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, yummy. Okay. <laughs> So we have tried to create this outro like five times. Oh my God, my voice is just terrible. So it is, okay, so it is almost nine o'clock. We have to get going because we have to pack up our luggage. It has to be outside at, I think by 10.30. So I think we're gonna do that and then we're gonna go to bed and we have to be off this ship by like 8 a.m. I was surprised it was so early, but that's how it is. So what did you think? Did you have a good time? I had a great time, yeah. It was yeah, a lot of fun. I think so, too. We had a good, I mean, l listen, this is not the standard room. Right, for sure. We were very spoiled. <laughs> yes. So we had a fantastic room, great first experience. We had mm -hmm. concierge. Yeah. This is not the typical cruise experience. Uh, we wanted to make sure we had a short stay to see if we liked it. Yeah. An amazing stay just to make sure we liked it. And I think we definitely got a good taste of the cruise life. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So I think we're, we will definitely go on another cruise again. Well, we were talking about it. We were talking about it in the lounge before dinner. I was like, okay, we're almost done with the cruise. Are we going to do this again? And you said yes. Yeah, we'll definitely cruise again for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yes, it has been a fun week filled with, like, relaxation, pools, massages, food, dinners. Activities, activities, yeah. activities. So, it's been busy. It's yeah. Like, like, I would like to say it's not, like, a complete relaxation vacation. I don't think it's meant to be that way. Yeah. So, it's I a agree. mix of all that, right? For so. sure. As you can hear, Caleb has his second wind, <laughs> so we have to start winding him down. And then, yeah, we got to get packing, yeah. so. 
Okay, it's time. It's 7.09 in the morning. We got into port, and now it's time to say goodbye to our room. Goodbye, <laughs> Goodbye, bed. I have to admit, I did not think this shower was that bad. I actually kind of liked it. And then we came in here. So, oh, I, will, I guess we'll turn the lights off as we go. And this is our bathroom. And so I never, I never did get to use this tub. Caleb used it yesterday and absolutely loved it. I never got a chance, but this, I have to admit, was a very nice bathroom. When you first walk in, you think it's so tight, but it was actually just fine. And this worked out really nice. The vanity, this is kind of where Steve and I did our hair. And then we had the closet. The only thing that was crazy is that this closet door constantly wanted to shut. Um, but yeah, this place worked out. Oh, let me just turn that off, okay? This place worked out so good for us. Steve and I kept thinking we were gonna set up Caleb's bed with this Murphy bed so that we could stay out here and lounge. It never happened. We would actually turn this TV on here and we would lay in bed and it, oh, this bed I thought, I thought was so comfortable. I would hit it and I would just fall right to sleep. So I didn't have too many late nights watching TV. And then of course our main stateroom, this is where Caleb slept. He would watch his cartoons. You ready to go, bud? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it nap. is. You need to finish your nap. Yeah, we had to get up early today. Today is the one day he slept in. The one day when we needed to go somewhere early, he was ready to sleep in. Yeah. Well, we had a long drive to Disneyland, so you can sleep on the car. Yeah. The vacation's still not over. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Oh, and then just to show you guys one last time, we got to turn these lights off. This is what, this was Caleb's bathroom, and it worked out really nice for him. Although it was kind of weird getting in here because this um, the towel would get bunched up. But yeah, so Caleb would just hang out in there and do his shower in the morning. And this was just a really, really nice room. But with that, it's time to go. All right, let's uh, head out. All right, our last morning in the concierge lounge. And you can see the crew is getting the ship ready for the next cruise, <laughs> the next group of people. Well, we hope you enjoyed these vlogs. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And from our magic family to yours, enjoy. enjoy.